Hi, Dan here from Watch Micro Plants for Peers. In a video a couple of months or a month ago when I was talking about what to look for on a smart drive washing machine, I made a mention of checking around the top of the bowl here for wear, and if that was worn it could mean your spline drive was worn. And then when I was filming it, I actually didn't go any further and talk about that. So I wanted to talk, make a video talking about this part here, which is the spline drive. And actually this part here is kind of the, the amazing little invention that makes the whole smart drive system possible. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how it works, how it's different from other washing machines of a gearbox, and then also how, it, how to look for it if it's been worn out. So we're going to start off by talking about what we need the washing machine to do. So whether we have a pulsator in the bottom like this or an agitator that sits up tall, Basically, we want two things. One, we want to fill it with water and we want to be able to agitate. For the agitate, this agitator here is going to turn backwards and forwards, but the bowl here wants to sit still, which is not happening at the moment. Uh, so we want that. We want the bowl to be free floating and we want the agitator to turn backwards and forwards. We don't want this trying to go full speed with the agitate. Then for the spin, we want the two of them to turn together and to be locked together. So we've got to have to find some way of locking and unlocking the two of them together. Traditionally, how that's been done is with a gearbox. So you have two shafts on the outside here. One shaft you connect onto the bowl, the other shaft you connect to the agitator. Then we'll just go look at the way we drive it. And what we do is we use a brake. Now there's a couple of different ways of doing it. For big machines like the, or the American machines like Maytag and Whirlpool and stuff like that, basically they drive the input in one direction and then with some planetary gears, they get an oscillating output out the other. So you've got a constant turning here, you have a brake holding the gearbox still, and then it reverses the direction. The disadvantage of that, you end up with quite a small sweep of the agitator and you need a much longer sweep to be able to wash better. So there's a few different gearbox designs to try and get a longer sweep. The other way to do it is how the Simpson gearbox does it, where there's no reversing of direction, it just steps it down. So it's just a speed reduction gearbox. We clamp this steady, we turn this here, and we just run the motor for um, you know 0.7 of a second or whatever timing in each direction. And then we want to spin. How the Maytags do it, they have that brake, as I said, which is holding this. When they turn the other direction, the brake winds up and releases, and then the way the gearbox is set up, it then drives the whole gearbox together. The way the Simpson do it is they have a, a um, clutch, and a lot of the cheaper machines, you know, little higher, basically any little machine of a top loader, which is a pulsator or a agitator, which is not a Maytag American machine and is not a Fisher & Paykel, will do it this way. We have a brake that releases, and then on the end of here, you have a little clutch spline, and as well as releasing the brake, it releases the spline, and that means that it actually binds onto here and turns the whole gearbox together, which we'll talk about um, another time when we're talking about these machines. But basically, you've got a single input, which sometimes is bound to the whole gearbox. You have a brake of some sort, and then if you're going to break the gearbox, it'll agitate. If you unbrake it, it'll spin. That means you need components like the brake release mechanism. Um, as I said, if, depending on how you're agitating, you may not have as much control over the agitation and you've got the space here which is going to be taking up a lot more room than the Fisher & Paykel system. So Fisher & Paykel take this gearbox with multiple gears, several parts all having to be put together and they replace it with this. And so they've done a couple of things first, is they built their whole motor. If you ever looked underneath the washing machine you'll know the big smart drive motor. It's kind of inverted in that you have the rotor on the outside of the motor so you bolt this steady instead of having the electrical windings turning you bolt that to the chassis you have this rotor on the outside being driven because it's got the magnets in it and then this spline here is sitting into there so that's our motor now a great big diameter motor like this means we've got lots of torque and so that's why we don't need the reduction of the gearbox we've got a lot of torque because of the smart drive electronic system we've got a lot of control over the agitate but then we've still got the thing at this end, we've only got one output. How do we control whether or not we want it to spin or agitate? And that is with the spline drive. This here screws into the bottom of the inner bowl, and then that sits inside it, and it actually, as you can see, it's free to float up and down. There's teeth there and there's teeth there. There's a spline inside here, which sits onto this. This is going to be slight, there we go. And then we have an agitator that sits over here, and we have a nut that holds the agitator on. The machine is empty of water, the whole bowl sits down with weight, and we have a direct drive through this spline here. So we're turning the agitator and the bowl are locked together. When the machine fills up, underneath it, it's got air bubbles built into the bottom of the bowl. As it fills up, those air bubbles float the whole bowl up. Now the bowl can only float up so far, 
and then it can't float up any further but then that's just enough to make this disengage and the lifting of the bowl is riding on this metal ring in here and so we'll show you on on an inner bowl in just a second it's the lifting of the bowl with the you know the air pressure lifting up and it automatically changes itself between agitate and spin fills out with water the bowl floats it can then agitate it drains out and it can spin you may notice something that the machine does which is a bowl check so when it's filling with water uh, they used to pause at definite times and do a little pulse and what it's doing is it's energizing the motor shaft for a second and just seeing how much drag there is on the shaft and it's looking for the bowl float point when it's floating of course the motor is basically going to stop instantaneously because there's no momentum when it's still engaged it's going to coast on just a little bit and inversely when it's draining out you'll hear it do this kind of chunk chunk and that's often which way you let it click down into place and it's pulsing the motor and then it's looking for that coast onwards if it doesn't see that coast then it assumes the bowl hasn't um, re-engaged properly which means that the water's not drained out properly or there could be something in here or if there's soap scum down here the bowl will get caught on that and may not drop back in so here's the spline in the bowl you can see it floats up and down there and on the bottom of the bowl we have these air pockets we have a top and bottom bearing surface that is going to sit on here on the shaft and up there and the whole bowl is going to float up so if you're going to take this out you'll see here there's actually three screws that go through into holes and they're kind of gunked up you're going to take this off um, to check it something to be aware of those screws are very soft metal and so they're also quite long into quite a bit of plastic and so if you just go in there you'll quite often strip it out so there's two things one we want to kind of clean out the heads of the screw so that we can get the screwdriver in and two we use this regrip or screw grip um, it's basically a paste with a sand in it that you put on the tip of your screwdriver and it means that the screwdriver actually grips so if you've got any screws that you know are going to be soft such as these ones here or in the top of gas hobs is the other situation uh, it's really good to use a spree grip the, the screw grip preemptively this one is really badly gummed up here's one I prepared earlier <laughs> this one's in much better condition uh, we could still get into that other one but there's no point in me spending time you actually see one of those screws looks like it's had a bit of a problem in the past no point in me spending time trying to get into it I think my screw grip's gone a bit tired uh, when we the purpose is just to make a video rather than directly fix that exact machine yeah my screw grip stuff's got a bit, a bit dry that's alright so it's going to push down and tune very gently I don't want my screw to start slipping come out no problem otherwise yeah, if it destroys the thread you just got to replace the screws or the next person to come along is going to have a real mission getting it out So if you have a look here, there's a little lip here, which is going to run on that metal bit there. This sits here. When the agitator sits on top, the agitator's got a space recessed for this lip, and the center of the agitator actually sits on the spline drive there. So the spline's being held in hard by the shaft, but this part here is riding up and on that metal bracket. And that's plastic, right? And the inside of this is a metal washer, but the plastic actually wears on the washer and once it wears through and it gets to the actual is rubbing on the plastic itself it'll chew through real quickly um, and so it can easily dig a millimeter or two up because this is locked in place and the bowl's trying to float up by coming up it's going to then ride up higher and that's how you get a groove which isn't this one's not you can see a tiny groove there it's not really a problem this other bowl here Again, it's got a little bit of a groove in it. And that can happen just from the neck ring, uh, if the neck ring is damaged. 
So if the net ring gets damaged, this one looks pretty good, but if you have too much clothes in, especially on the smaller machines, they can kind of end up being out the top when it's spinning, it'll melt this neck ring, it'll droop down a bit. And when the bowl rises up, it's gonna take me two hands, just get the bowl fancy. The bowl rides up, and you can see it's depending on how it's gonna sit, it could rub a little bit. So having a little bit of wear there is not too much of a problem. If you've got a lot of wear there, then it means it could be that that spline's worn out and it's chewing up through the plastic. And if that happens too much, and you wear all the way through this, this has got water in it for the counterbalance. You need that water sloshing around, there's a ring here in the bottom with water in it. If that water leaks out, then the machine won't spin properly, it'll just go out of balance all the time. So there we go. Christian Parkle's answer to a gearbox is a simple little mechanism that automatically chooses between wash and spin, and a good motor that can drive through without reduction. Um, and so that's how they... That's basically the, the basis of a smart drive system. Interestingly enough, there are some... There was a technology transfer between Fisher and Paykel and Whirlpool. And so I know there are some Whirlpool machines in America which um, use something very similar to this. Not cross compatible. I've tried, I've ordered them, they're a slightly different diameter. Um, but yeah, there's a, there are some Whirlpool machines which are basically made very much on the Fisher and Paykel um, design due to technology transfer in the early 2000s, I think it was.